an integer is a number whose range is between that freaking number with a minus sign, as you can see, to this other freaking number without the minus sign. Now, if you want an unsigned integer, which is in here, unsigned, then click on unsigned. It is going to tell you which is a, um, yeah, let me see. You know what? Jump that. Go to c++.com, which is better because in there you get the original information. Yay. Go to the language tutorial link. And in there, there is a link that I'm going to show you in a few seconds if my internet decides to work at some point or if the page decides to load if it wants to oh yeah here it comes so basically here the variable data types is a the second the second um, link in the basics of C++ you can just simply go there and again yeah of here there's a little table which is very very clear about it it tells you that um, short integer is a number between yeah what is that 32,000 minus 32,000 and 32,000 right but an integer is an assigned number between minus that freaking number to that freaking number or unsigned which means without a sign from zero till there so basically if you're num if you're gonna pass a number that is between those two numbers then you can pass an unsigned number uh, unsigned number in this case I'm passing 400 or and 500 which both are unsigned integers that's why I'm just simply specifying that now remember the problem is that in C++ you have to specify which type of variable you're passing um, to a function so basically when you in ad hoc you say var text for example very simple in C++ that doesn't go. If you want to store an integer into into a variable, you have to really say integer variable equals five, for example. It is like that. Um, that's why you have to specify those kind of things when you call those functions. That is the difficult part to figure out which type of variable you are gonna pass, how it does, how does it work. When you read the, the documentation, please check what it says. And if you're not sure, well, we're in the forum, you can ask. <laughs> We're gonna help you, that is not a problem. Then there is the return value. It returns true, or uh, if, it, if the return is non-zero, then it is successful. If it is zero, then it, is, uh, it uh, had an error, for example. So, simple as it is, if I just simply grab this, let's just run it just to stop babbling and you can see something going on. Um, if I call this DLL call to this uh, function, the set cursor position, and I say put it in that position and I run it, the mouse is going to move alone over there. Actually, you cannot see it because, yeah, you cannot see my hand, but it is moving al out of my, uh, alone. You can test it at home. You can put another number, let's say, um, let's say this, and I say run, and the mouse goes to that position because that's what that particular function does. Now, in our hotkey we have the mouse move for that which is the same it does exactly the same thing and you might be wondering except for a few coordinate things but um yes well not nothing out of the ordinary but how do i do the little hand yes let's check that one out well here we have a piece of code that i'm just gonna show you very quickly Basically, let's just go very quickly over it because I talked a lot. Um, I'm just catching the message 0 to 100, which uh, means when you move the mouse. And this is something I have the other help file in here, which is called list of Windows messages. This is a bunch of uh, static variables that um, the Windows library contains, Windows.h, I think. And uh, for example, when you let's, uh, I'm actually, I just want to check if somebody is moving the mouse. Well, the message for that is 0 to 100. So basically, 
I'm just saying, whenever the user is moving the mouse, go and execute that function that is in here. The on message is another feared function, but it is very cool and it is very easy to use. As you just say, I just specify which message I want to catch and which function I want to run. In this case, this is the function that I'm going to be running. This function is static, which means that my variables are going to be set up only once, unless I actually change them. But for example, if I set it in here, I can that number is always going to be the same because I set it once, right? So in this case, what I'm setting that variable to is to a DLL call to load cursor. And to that particular function, I'm passing the first parameter, which is an integer, zero, and a second parameter that is also an integer, 32649. Actually, this little part in here, I'm not going to go on to that, but the last parameter is to specify, um, I can force DLL call to return a specific type of variable. In this case, I'm forcing it to return a number as well. Now you tell me, how do you know what to pass? Well, easy, just go to MSDN, load cursor, and it tells you that the first parameter is input and it is optional, which is the, an instance. As it is optional, you can pass zero to it, which is null here. And um, the second parameter is a long pointer to a cursor named me. And if you keep reading, especially when you check onto that parameter, it tells you what do you want to be, the name of the cursor to resource to be loaded, blah, blah, blah. Alternatively, this parameter can consist of the resource identifier. And you can go on reading. The point is that, in short, you can just grab that number in there. In this case, IDC hand is 32649. And uh, that's what I'm passing to it, 32649, which is the hand. And basically, I just check if the message, which is this particular variable in here, is equal to 0 to 0 200, mouse move, as we mentioned before, then grab the name of the current control. And if the control is the one called static1, then we're going to call another function that is part of the Windows library. It is called set cursor. I'm going to pass to that particular function a, an unsigned integer, which is the pointer to that icon hand that I just created here in this particular line. So this DLL call um, is going to return a number. Actually, we can see it when I just create it. That particular number is, of course, because I'm moving the mouse. A lot so basically um, this uh, in this particular variable is stored a number which is a pointer to that particular icon and whenever the mouse is on that particular control then we're gonna set the cursor to that uh, thing that we just pointed to that icon that we just pointed um, and that's it actually here we go we just put the mouse on top of it and the little hand shows up. That is the power of DLL call. It is not that difficult. The, the difficult part is actually those functions, understanding the functions that you're actually calling. Now, um, I hope that this actually cleared up some of the bad ideas that people have about DLL call. Yes, it can get very, very messy. But as long as you're reading the, docu the, the documentation of what you're trying to do, you should be fine. You can then try to do some stuff like some attempts that I have been doing. Like, for example, a, um, let's say, scintilla wrapper. Um, there is a DLL called SCI Lexer that contains a bunch of functions, very amazingly cool functions. And uh, the way to access those functions is actually going ahead and calling. Let me go there, hold on. Um, the way of actually uh, calling those functions is doing, obviously, a DLL call, because as I mentioned before, the 
the um, here here it is the DLL call that I was looking for so what happens is that as I said it is a DLL file and I'm actually calling the functions that are inside the DLL file and uh, yeah you can do pretty pretty amazing stuff actually um, because other people already did the job for you you just have to access it and DLL call is the way to access those things so let me stop talking now <laughs> um, I hope that these examples clarified something for you and the way that I explain it I hope that it's actually helped you understand a little bit more how DLL call works um, in general keep MSDN close keep c++.com closed because you will need to read some things from there as well and keep the help files open they will save your day <laughs> so that's it for today guys i hope that this was helpful and i will continue with another video next time